Okay. All right. Uh, good afternoon again. So we are going to uh, start with this second <clears throat> session related to English phonetics or phonetics. No? So remember that we are going to start talking about sounds. No? Remember that the last session that we had, we said that phonetics is related to the study of sounds. No? <clears throat> and we are going to make a um, <clears throat> quick feedback related to phonetics. No? Remember that phonetics comes from a Greek word that is phone, phone is similar to say a sound or voice. No? Remember, phone is a sound or voice. Then we, um, so what is the difference? No, what is the difference? Oh, can you listen to me? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, yes. okay, because my internet is telling me that it's not so, so good. Please, if you couldn't listen to me, please tell me. Yeah? Maybe using your microphone or that chat, yeah? because I think my internet connection is not so good. Yeah? yeah, okay, so let's continue. When we talk about the study of sounds, remember that we are going to analyze to study the speech sound, not the sounds that we produce when we speak. This is the phones, remember. Phones are the sounds that we produce, that we articulate when we speak, when we talk. That's why here it says speech sounds, no? Remember that. And what are we going to study about the sounds? The production, the audition, and the perception of sounds, remember. That's why we're going to have three, three levels of a study, no? Three levels of a study. And so we have three branches of phonetics, no? the articulatory phonetics related to the study of a speech production. Then we have the acoustic phonetics related to the transmission of these sounds, the speech transmission. And finally, we have the auditory phonetics that is related to the perception of sounds. So that's why here says, a speech perception. So remember, when we talk about phonetics, we are going to study sounds, yes. But how we are going to study sounds? By analyzing its production, transmission, and perception. Don't forget about it. That's why we have three branches of phonetics, right? Then we talked about phonology. Remember the differences between phonology and phonetics? They share a similitude, the similarity. What is the similarity? That both, they both study sounds, but phonetics study the sounds in isolation, one by one. But phonology studies the sound, as you can see here, as a system, remember, we are going to study the sounds as a system. Then in the next module, we're going to give more explanation about phonology. That's why we study phonemes, not phones. Remember, in phonetics, phones. In phonology, phonemes. What, uh, what are the phonemes? Sounds, again, similar to phones. Phones are sounds. Phonemes are sounds. The difference is in the way you recognize them. Phones, physical sounds, the sound that we produce, that we articulate, and we have a lot, all right? We have a huge number of phones. But when we talk about phonemes, we have just a small group, a small set of phonemes. For example, in the English language, as we have seen in the last session, we have just 40 sounds. It means 40 phonemes but we have more than 100 phones. No, we were talking about it, no? That each phoneme has different phones that they are called allophones because they are physical variations of a phoneme. So each phoneme could have three or four or five phones or allophones, no? That's why the difference between phones and phonemes and also the other, no? So here we are going to analyze this table Phonetics, remember, related to phone. Phonology is related to phonemes, remember, phonemes. A phone is one of many possible sounds in the languages of a world, remember. 
one of many possible sounds. So we have a huge number of sounds that we can produce. A phoneme, what is a phoneme? It's a contrastive unit in the sound system, remember, system of a particular language. So you are going to make a contrast, distinguish. That's why here it says contrastive, because we are going to differentiate meanings. If we change one phoneme to another phoneme, we can change the meaning of words. That's why here it says contrastive. Now, the second point according to the phone is that the phone is the smallest identifiable unit found in a stream of a speech. A phoneme on the other side, it's a minimal unit that serves to distinguish, notice, to distinguish between meanings of words. No? That's what I told you that is called contrastive. The third point related to a phone. A phone is pronounced in a defined way, something specific in a physical aspect. No? A phoneme is pronounced in one or more ways, depending on the number of allophones. Notice a phoneme could be pronounced in different ways because they have different allophones. No? We have seen in the previous session, no? for example, the sound uh, pa or ta. This is a phoneme, no? This is what you have in your mind. Ta. Okay, but when you produce this sound in words, you change a little bit the physical aspect of this sound. No, as I told you, pen and a stop. Pen, the sound pa appears at the beginning, you produce aspiration, no? Pa, 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 pen, pen. But when this sound appears at the end, stop. Notice your, your mouth is closed. You don't release the air, right? You stop the air. Stop. You don't say stop. Stop. You don't say that, right? <laughs> you say stop. So your lips are together, right? Are close together. Stop. Notice you are producing the same phoneme, pa, but you are producing this sound in two different physical ways. One, when you release the air, pain, pain, you release the air, the aspiration. No? And the second one, stop, you don't release the air. You maintain the air in your mouth. Stop, stop. And notice, you are producing the same phoneme, but you are producing this phoneme in two different physical ways. And these two different uh, physical ways are called phones. And at the same time, they are called allophones. That's why here it says, no, depending on the number of allophones, a phoneme could be pronounced in different ways, depending on the number of allophones. But on the other side, a phone is just one. You have just one pa with aspiration. Then you have the pa with no aspiration. You cannot divide this sound into more. No, this is the only one. That's why here says a defined way. And finally, notice the final point related to a phone represented between brackets. Now, this is what I told you the last session. You use brackets to represent phones. And the phoneme you use slashes. And notice here, brackets, it's related to phones, slashes is related to phonemes. And this is a way that you can um, transcribe these symbols, so these sounds, no? And they have a name. I'm going to write here the names. Yeah, for example, when you talk about uh, phones, you call this broad, Transcription. Remember, broad transcription. You call this kind of transcription broad one because it's, um, here you have, um, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm getting a, a mistake. The other side, this is the other side. Here you call this um, narrow transcription. Sorry, narrow transcription. Yeah, that's it. 
narrow transcription. Why? Because you are giving a, a specific details how to produce the sound. No? As you can see, uh, you could see in the last session, the power with the letter H, not this letter H at the top. Ah, I'm going to produce the power with aspiration. And the power with no H, oh yeah, is no aspiration. So you are giving more specific details how to produce the sounds. That's why we call this a narrow transcription. And when you use a slashes, when you use a slashes, you're going to talk about a broad transcription. Broad means general. It's not a specific transcription, remember? Now, don't forget about these uh, two types of transcription when you talk about sounds. Um, if you want to give more specific details how to produce the sound, you use phones. And that's you use a narrow transcription, you use brackets. But when you talk about a general, not a general way to pronounce the sound, and you use phonemes, and you use the slashes, so we call this a broad transcription. No? If you could see in the dictionaries, they work with a broad transcription because they use the slashes. No? If you could notice, if you uh, take into account in your dictionaries, they don't use brackets to represent the sounds. They use slashes. Oh, sorry, sorry. Lucy, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes? Oh, yeah, I'm going to take it out of the wallpaper, yeah, the background. Yeah, let me see. Um, no, I can't. <laughs> no, I, my, my connection is terrible. I don't know what's happening, but tell me, tell me, all right? Yes, can you hear me? Yes? Could you hear all this part? Okay, all right. Okay, no. All right, okay, yeah, because some of you told me that it's sometimes it's cut it off. Yeah, I, I think my connection is not so good today. Um, all right. So this is the difference between these uh, two sounds. Remember, both of them are sounds. One is physical and the other is abstract. One is pronounced in a defined way. The other one have different ways to be pronounced. One is represented with brackets and the other is represented with slashes. All right, now let's continue. We're going to continue. So this example, we saw it the last session, oh, sorry. No, ta, we have the ta, this is the abstract mental category. It's in your mind, this is a phoneme. And then we had the phones. This phoneme is pronounced in two different ways. Ta, notice here the difference in the transcription. At the top, you have slashes. And the second level, you have brackets. Slashes means that is a phoneme. And the other one, uh, here you have brackets, so it means they are phones. These two phones belong to the same phoneme. So we call them allophones. Allophones are the sounds that we actually say, remember? The phones Sorry. are the sounds. Oh, yes? Oh, anybody? No. Remember, the sounds uh, are the uh, what we produce, what we actually say what we actually speak. So we produce the phones, remember? We produce the phones. That's why we say that they are physical. They are not mental. Mental are the phonemes, what you have in your mind. No, oh yeah, this is on ta, yeah, all right, yeah. Yeah, we join ta, the sound a and the sound n, and we produce the word ten. But if you change the sound ta, with the sound pa, you have pen. Notice you are changing meaning. Ta, pa, ten, pen. Oh, they are phonemes. Why we could say that they are phonemes? Because they are changing the meaning of the words. Ta, ten, a number. You are talking about quantity. Pa, pen. Oh, you are talking about an object. 
no, in order to write something. So notice, you just change one sound and you change the meaning of the word. So how do we call these sounds? Phonemes, remember. Phonemes are the sounds that we use that change the meaning of words. So they serve us to distinguish, you know, that's why he says in the previous slides, no? you use them to distinguish the meaning of words. That's why we say they are cognitive and um, contrastive units, because we are going to make a contrast. Oh, ta, pa, no, they are different because we change the meaning of words, all right? For example, Let's talk about the, the, um, the accents, you know, the most common American and British. American, we say <clears throat> after, not a word. I gave you this as an example in order to remember. Notice the difference of the sounds. Yeah, pen, ten, we change meaning, phonemes. Now, notice this example, after, after. Oh, please don't forget about turning off your microphones. Um, after, this is American. In British, you say after, 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 after. Notice the first vowel is different, right? Yes? After, 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 after. The first vowel is different. Teacher, the first vowel, you use the front part of your tongue, after. But the other vowel, off, you use the back part of your tongue. This is the British vowel, remember? Uh, the other is American, ah, and the other, ah. Oh. But we change the meaning of the word after, 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 after. Do we change the meaning of the word? No, right? You are not changing the meaning of the word. After is a recession, a conjunction, right? But you change the sound. Yes, I change the sound but I didn't change the meaning of the word. So what am I producing? Phones. More specifically, allophones. Because we are not changing the meaning of the word. Notice, this is the difference between a phoneme and a phone. Phoneme, we change the meaning of the words. A phone, we don't change meaning of words. Uh, they are not contrastive units. All right. So then we talked about this um, this list of phonemes. Now, now we are going to talk about something very important. Maybe when you were a student of English and now that you are a teacher, maybe. So we use a dictionary. Now, nowadays we use online dictionaries or translators. No. But a dictionary was commonly used just as a translator, no? The most common use of a dictionary was to, oh yeah, I check up the translation of the meaning and you close it up, right? Yes or no? Maybe you use it in other way. Yes. Yeah, no, most of the time, no? Most of the time we use the dictionary just as a translator. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, knowledge, uh, conocimiento, okay and you close it, <laughs> and that's it, no? And that's it. But notice, a dictionary has a lot of information, and now I'm gonna give you some of the uses. Why we are talking about dictionaries? Because in the dictionaries, you have the pronunciation of words. You can um, have the pronunciation of words if you look up the meaning of a word in a dictionary too. A dictionary is not only to look for a meaning of translation, it has many other uses and we are going to see how we can use effectively. Look at this example. Notice this word, metropolitan, metropolitan. Notice you have here some dots, points, then you have the slashes, you have an apostrophe <clears throat> down, then you have an apostrophe up, you have the symbols, notice you have the symbols, then you have an, an abbreviation, ADJ, and finally you have a meaning, no? a definition, a concept. So notice what are going to be the uses of a dictionary. One of the uses that we could see in a dictionary is that we could know the number of syllables. 
And this is one of the uses, the number of syllables. Some dictionaries work with dots or points, but you could tell me, oh, teacher, my dictionary doesn't work with the dots or points, just a word together. So I don't have the number of syllables. Yes, you can uh, notice or you can realize the number of syllables if you don't have the dots or uh, points. How could you recognize the number of syllables? There is a rule. When we talk about phonology, and then we're going to explain more about it. When we talk about phonology, we are going to divide a syllable in parts. And the most important part of a syllable is the vowel. If there is no vowel, there is no syllable. So if you see in this word, notice, I'm going to emphasize, I'm going to emphasize. If you could see in this uh, word, notice the symbols, uh, the symbols, not the, le the letters. Uh, yeah, here, remember, we're not talking about the letters. We're talking about sounds. So we're going to emphasize on the symbols. For example, here you have one vowel, A. Then you have another vowel, A. Then you have another one that is A. Then another one that is A again, A again. Notice this inverted E. No? I told you last uh, session, the inverted E is the schwa the vowel that we use the most. Why? Because we use this vowel in unstressed syllables. Remember, we commonly use the schwa or o oh, in unstressed syllables. Notice here you have one, two, three syllables which are unstressed. And we have two others, no? E, o. Why? Because they are going to have stress the major voice, remember, no, it stresses the major voice inside a word, no, or inside a syllable. Metropolitan, me and po are going to be stressed. One has a secondary stress and the other has a primary stress. No, there are some words that could have two stresses, not just one, two stresses. And teacher, so how many syllables do we have? As I told you, a syllable is composed principally by a vowel. The nucleus of a syllable is the vowel. So count how many vowels do we have? One, a, 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 a. So we have five vowels. So how many syllables do we have? five syllables. But remember, don't get confused. When we talk about vowels, I'm not talking about the letters. I'm talking about the sounds. Yeah? Remember, and when we talk about sounds, we have these symbols. Remember, these symbols represent the sounds, the slashes. Notice, you use the slashes. Ah, teacher, so they are using phones or phonemes? Can you tell me? They are phones or phonemes? Phones. Phonemes, teacher. Phonemes. Remember, slashes, phonemes. Brackets, phones. So the dictionaries, remember, dictionaries work with phonemes, not with phones. Huh? Dictionaries work with phonemes, not phones. But you could get, notice that you could get a phonetic dictionary. If you could get a phonetic dictionary, you can notice the difference. In phonetics dictionaries, you could find brackets and you have more symbols, more specifications, how to produce the sound. These are general, broad transcription. Remember, when you use the slashes, broad transcription. It means a general transcription of the sound. No specific details, all right? All right, so notice, if your dictionary doesn't have these points or dots, because here in this dictionary work with dots or points, no, met, ro, po, e, ton. Notice, so we have five syllables, no? Met, ro, po, e, ton. Five syllables, right? Five syllables. So, but if your dictionary doesn't work with points or dots, 
So you have to go to the phonetic transcription. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me see. Which symbols are vowels? Yeah. E, O, A, E, E. Five vowels. Ah, teacher, this <clears throat> word has five syllables. Eh? Five syllables. Remember, we're talking about sounds. Yeah? All right. So one of the uses is this, the number of syllables. Now, let's continue with another use. In the dictionary, you could see the stressed syllable. Teacher, which syllable is stress? I don't know exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, metropol me metropolitan, metropolitan. No, I, I can't remember. Oh, yeah. You go to the dictionary. And how could you find this? Because of the apostrophe. Here you have an apostrophe. Notice here, you have this apostrophe before the stressed syllable. So it means metropolitan, metropolitan. But teacher, I can see another apostrophe that is down. Notice here you have another apostrophe. One is at the top and the other is down, up and down. Remember, the apostrophe which is up is the main stress or primary stress. Remember, this is the main stress or primary stress. And teacher, and what about the second? The apostrophe which is down. Oh yeah, the apostrophe which is down is the secondary stress. This is not the main, secondary stress. So as you can see here, there are some words in English that could have two stresses, not just one, two stresses, as in this word, no? Metropolitan, notice, you start high, metropolitan. So you raise your voice up twice, not just once, twice, metropolitan, metropolitan. Notice, twice. Here you have two stresses, and you can notice this in the dictionary. The dictionary tells you where to stress, which syllable or syllables are stressed. Notice this is another use of a dictionary. Let's continue. The other one is the pronunciation no? with the symbols. That's the purpose of this module, not to recognize. At the end, you, you must recognize all the symbols, all the sounds in English and so that you can pronounce any word, any word. Just looking up your dictionary, oh yeah, this is the symbol. Oh, okay, yeah, I pronounce in this way. So notice, you can pronounce any word. It's not necessary to hear maybe an audio or maybe another professor, teacher, no. You just check up in your dictionary. Oh yeah, these are the symbols, yeah, this is the sound. Okay, I got it. And you can pronounce anywhere notice anywhere maybe you cannot remember or you forgot or you don't know how to pronounce a word so you can check up in your dictionary and also you can find the number of syllables the stress syllable the pronunciation let's continue the other use of a dictionary is to recognize the part of a speech what is the part of a speech What is the part of a speech? Nobody, nobody? Part of a speech. Notice here the abbreviation. What does this abbreviation stand for? ADJ. What does it mean? The adjective. Yes. So part of a speech is? The kind of the word, if it's a substantive, adjective, a verb. Yes, you're right. That type of word, this is in syntactical. This is a syntactical name, no? This is a technical name. Part of a speech are the different kinds of different type of words that we have, nouns, verbs, 
adjectives, adverbs, conjunctions, prepositions, interjections. Then we are going to, when we pass to morphology, so we are going to talk about these different parts of words. No? So the dictionary, notice the dictionary tells you what type of word this is. And be careful in that, because in English, some words can be different words, different type of words. For example, the word like, no, you know, ah, teacher like is easy, it's a verb, no? You use it to talk about your preferences, no? Like. But do you know that like is also an adverb? Like teacher, yes, it's a verb, yeah. Yeah, it's very, very common. Yes, we use this a lot, no? Like as a verb. But do you know that this like is also an adverb, not a verb, an adverb? No? For example, I'm going to give you um, this common question when you want to ask about personality. Can you remember what we ask when we want to know the personality of another person? What do we ask? How do we ask about personality? Can you tell me? You want to know the personality of the other person. How do you ask? Do you say, what is your personality? <laughs> no, right? You don't say, what is your personality? So what is the common what question? Is, uh, I don't what do you feel? Like? <laughs> oh, again, 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 please. How, how do you, and, uh, I can't remember if it's okay. How me, uh, you look like? How you look like? Yeah, how do you look like or what do you look like yeah. is the physical appearance. Yeah. This is the physical appearance. But notice, like here, yeah, this is okay. Yeah. Like, notice here, is not a verb, right? It's like yeah. an adverb. What is the verb here? Look. What do you look like? What do you look like? Notice, you're asking about physical appearance. Look like is used to ask about physical appearance. What do you look like? Oh, yeah. Oh, what does he look like? Okay, he's tall, he's handsome, he's uh, very thin. No? So you're asking about, or you're um, telling the physical appearance. And you're asking with the question, what do you look like? But it's a similar question to talk about personality. In, but instead of look, you use the verb be. What are what you are like? you like? Exactly. Uh-huh. What are you like? Notice like doesn't mean in Spanish gustar. Si se dan cuenta ahí el like ya no significa gustar. What are you like? Like here is an adverb. It's not a verb. Notice. So it's very important when you look up words in a dictionary, don't close it so fast. Or maybe you are using an online dictionary or an app because nowadays we have digital dictionaries. No. So when you're using one of them, physical or digital, don't just get in the first part. No. Oh, yeah. OK. Like we start. Yeah. And, and you pass to the other. No. You have to take your time. Oh, yeah, like, okay, yeah, I know that this is a good start in Spanish. You use it to talk about preferences, something that you usually do or you like, no? But you have to check up the other part. Oh, notice here, like it's also an adverb. Notice, this is very important. And the dictionary <coughs> gives you this information. Maybe you're not using in a properly way. That's the problem, no? That's the difficulty that you are using just as a translator, no? Just as a translator and that's it. But notice the different uses. One of them is the part of a speech, no? The part of a speech, it means the different type of words in a language. And finally, we have the meaning or translation. Meaning if you are using a monolingual dictionary, English, English, or translation if you're using a bilingual dictionary, no? So one of the dictionaries that I use the most is Longman. I don't know if you have here or you have used this dictionary before. Have you ever used this dictionary, Longman? No, no. No, no? 
Yeah, I'm going to share with you because it's very important and try to use monolingual dictionaries, English, English. All right. So I'm going to share, I'm going to change my screen. Mm, yeah. Here, can you watch it? Tell me you can watch it. Yes, can you watch it? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, so this is a monolingual dictionary, yeah, English, English. For example, let's uh, write this word. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Another, another important part that a dictionary has is that you can have, and we are going to use this in morphology. When we talk about morphology, we are going to talk about it, but we are going to get it in advance. Now, a word family, notice. First, the pronunciation, notice, I'm going to make it bigger. You have the word here, you have the number of syllables, you have the dots, notice here. It means that this word has two syllables, knowledge, knowledge. And notice the pronunciation, eh? knowledge, knowledge, eh? no, it's not no, eh? notice, it's not knowledge, no, it's no, no, no. For example, this symbol that you can see here is British. Yeah. The inverted A, no, this is like an inverted A from right to left. So this is a British accent, no, no, notice my lips. Notice my lips, it's a little rounded, <coughs> knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. No. And the other is the short E, lich, lich, lich. Notice the other one. The other one is American. And what is the difference? That this is more open, it's not rounded, it's open, nah, nah, nah. Notice my lips again, the first one, British, no, no, no. American, no. nah. No, 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 no. Eh? Notice here the difference, no. British and American. Then when we pass to vowel sounds, we're going to make a comparison between the vowel in American English and the vowels in British English. It's just a few. Yeah? Most of them are similar, but there's just a few differences in vowels. Eh? You could hear one of them, that the British vowel here is back. You use the back part of your tongue. Oh, oh, oh. The American vowel here is a front vowel sound or back, but it's longer. Oh, 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 oh. Notice the difference, all right? British and American. So we are producing phones. We are not producing here, oh, allophones, notice because we have a difference, a physical difference on this vowel, but the meaning is the same, right? You say knowledge or you say knowledge is the same. The meaning doesn't change. You just change the physical aspect of the sound. Oh, in American English, we use um, central vowel, no, not so back, but in British English, we use the back vowel because we're going to use the back part of our tongue. All right, so notice here you have uh, the pronunciation, the number of syllables, the stress. Oh, teacher, where is the stress? Here, the apostrophe. Notice here you have an apostrophe. Maybe it's not so clear because it's too small. Yeah? You have the apostrophe. Ah, the apostrophe is before the first syllable. So this first syllable is a stress. Knowledge, knowledge, and knowledge. Then you have the meaning. What is knowledge? Uh, oh, sorry. Then you have the type of word or part of a speech. Ah, knowledge is a noun, uncountable noun. Also, you have a grammatical information. Ah, knowledge is an uncountable noun. Right? Notice all the information that you have in a dictionary. And finally, you have the meaning. Uh, what is knowledge? Ah, oh, the information, skills, and understanding that you have gained through learning or experience. Notice I'm using a digital dictionary because this is online. Now you don't pay anything. You just write on Google Longman Dictionary and you can use it free. You don't pay anything. Yeah. Um, 
according to my opinion, is one of the most um, wonderful dictionaries that we have because it has a lot of information. Notice here at the beginning that we have a word family. So different words which come from this word, not the word, the base word is no. Then you have knowledge, knowing, knowledgeable, known, unknown, knowingly, unknowingly, knowledgeably. Notice all the words that we can make with no, no, knowledge, unknown, known, knowledgeable, knowing, knowingly, unknowingly, knowledgeably. And you can realize that you are making new words. Now, this is morphology because you are going to add, add prefixes or suffixes. No, the base word, the root word is no. You can add a prefix or suffix, unknown, knowing, uh, the ing, <coughs> unknowingly. Notice one prefix, two suffixes. And notice that you can make a lot of words. So, the purpose of this is that you can realize that a dictionary has a lot of uses. You can have a lot of information. You also have sentences. You also have the register. Now, register means uh, the context that you're using in formal or informal way, no? Notice here, you have the grammar, countable or uncountable. Knowledge is countable or uncountable. That you have collocations. What is the meaning of collocation? Do you know what is a collocation? Collocation. Position. Oh, again, again, please. Position, sir, teacher. Position. Mm, no, no, no. No, to see the examples. Have some knowledge of something. Get knowledge. Increase your knowledge. Improve your knowledge. So collocations are fixed expressions that you join two words or three words together and we usually use them together. You know, a group of words that we usually use them together. This is a collocation. You know, have knowledge or have some knowledge get knowledge, increase knowledge, improve knowledge. And these two words together, they usually go together and we usually use them together. So we call them- it's Like phrasal verbs? No, 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 no. Phrasal verbs, they are not similar to this. Here in uh, a phrasal verb, a phrasal verbs are a word that is composed by two parts. You don't have two words. Phrasal verbs, just one word. Here you have two or three words, and yeah? they are words separated, no? Have is one word, knowledge is another word, something is another word. So this is expression. But the phrasal verbs, no. Teacher, but I have two words. Yeah, when you see, maybe you can see, no? Get up, uh, sit up, no? Come in, come on. Teacher, but I have two words. Yeah, when you see it. But when you go to the meaning, they have just one meaning, right? Come up or look up, two words, but the meaning is just one. So these two words work as one, but this, no, these are phrases, expressions that are composed by two or three or four words together. No, we usually use them together, all right? This is not the same. No? Collocation is not similar to say phrasal verbs. Yeah? And also, as you says, you have here uh, some phrases, more phrases, eros, a thesaurus. So notice here all the information that you have. You have a lot. You have a lot of information, and that's why, and that way, you can increase your knowledge. <laughs> that's the way we're talking about knowledge. You can increase your vocabulary, your knowledge. You can use this word in different ways. You can uh, create more words using this one. So notice here, you can pronounce it better. You can recognize the number of syllables. So notice all the information that you could get from a dictionary, all right? So I'd advise you to do the same. I'd advise you to do the same. All right, so let's go back to the slides. Mm, yeah, this is it. Yeah. 
here. So don't forget about the uses of a dictionary. Now, we are going to start talking about the articulatory phonetics. So we are going to start talking about the articulation of sounds. But before talking about the articulation of sounds, we must recognize which organs are we going to use in order to produce these sounds. That's why here says the articulatory anatomy. Can you recognize some parts of the articulatory anatomy in the picture? Here you have this picture and you have some numbers, all right? So we are going to do it together. Yeah? Don't be scared. Oh, teacher, what is that? I don't know. What is it? Oh, no, I, I can't remember the name of this uh, part of our vocal track. No, if you can see here, we have the oral track <clears throat> and an nasal track. No, so we have the oral track. So we are going to use these organs in order to produce sounds. Let's uh, start with the first one. Now we are going to do it together. Yeah? Let's start with number one. Here you have the number one. Can you tell me how do we call this part? This is inside our throat, yeah? inside our throat. It's like an open eye. If you could see in this picture, it's like an open eye. And this is very important when we produce sounds, specifically consonant sounds, because in consonants, we're going to have two types of consonants, consonants with vibration and consonants with no vibration. Where do you vibrate the sounds? Can you recognize it? Mm -hmm. Number one, it's inside your throat, yeah? inside your throat, and you use this organ to <coughs> vibrate or not vibrating sounds. Mm -hmm. In order to produce Vocal vibration. Cords. Yes, that's it. The vocal folds, eh? the vocal cords or vocal folds, no las cuerdas vocales. Remember, this is here inside your throat, eh? inside your throat. So you can find here, these are muscles, no? These are muscles. When you open the muscles, the sound is not vibrated. When you close the muscles, the sound is vibrated. No, it's like this. I don't know, you can see, yeah, here like a night huh? this is imagine that these are the two muscles you open it and the sound is not vibrated you put it together and the sound is vibrated open no vibrated close it you vibrate a sound so this is the vocal folds what about number two is the epiglottis oh number two number two Number two is epiglottis. No. I think it's uh, This is the track where you would separate if it is to the mouth, the air goes through the mouth or the air goes through the nose. Mm. Number two, notice number two. <clears throat> this is mandible. No, the mandible is here in my chin. No, this is the mandible. The mandible uh, and the party, party. Yes, party. that's it. Party. Number two is the pharynx. La pharynx. pharynx you know? The pharynx. pharynx. Exactly. What about number three? Let's pass to number three here. Number three. Nasal cavity. Yes, you are right. The nasal cavity, very good. Mm -hmm. The nasal cavity, or inside and the nose, no? In order to produce nasal sounds, no? Nasal sounds, you use the nasal cavity. Very good. Number four, let's continue with number four. We have two fours, no? This and this. Four, four. Mm -hmm. 
We use this organ a lot. Upper, upper. Look at my face. Heart, palate. Teeth. <laughs> yes, the teeth, no? Upper teeth, remember? Upper, lower. Upper, lower teeth. teeth. So we have the teeth, no? In general, the teeth. But the other, the teeth which are up is called upper. Upper teeth. Uh -oh. And the other below, lower teeth. Upper, lower. Mm -hmm. And don't forget it. So here we have number four, the teeth. Uh-huh, the teeth. Excellent. Number five, you told me, you told me number five. One of you told me number five. One of you told me number five. Glutis. The glutis. Oh, yeah, close, 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 D. Epiglottis. Epiglottis, yes. The epiglottis. The epiglottis is a muscle that you use it in order to close the tract, which is go to your uh, lumps, no? Or to eat, no? Sometimes when we speak and eat at the same time, <coughs> We start coughing. So coughing. So it means that your epiglottis didn't close too fast and your uh, food goes to the lungs and so on. No? So this is the epiglottis. No, it's very important muscle. That's good. Very good. Number six. What about number six? So the epiglottis. No? Number five is epiglottis. Number six, the lips. Yes. Similar to the teeth, upper lip lower lip no upper lower upper lower upper lip lower lip now don't forget about these names number seven what about number seven notice here number seven Soft, soft palate or? Uh -huh. Yes, you're right. The soft palate. Mm -hmm. Excellent. The soft palate is the back part of your mouth. No? Mm -hmm. When you open your mouth wide, so wide, open wide, you can see at the back a muscle that is similar to a bell, no? Similar to a bell that is called a uvula. This is part of the soft palate. Yeah? Uvula, remember this name, because when we talk about consonant sounds, we are going to classify some sounds are produced here. That's why we call them velar, uvula or velum or soft palate. Yeah? These three terms are related to the back part of our mouth, no? the soft palate. Now, number eight. What about number eight? What about number eight? I think it's hard, hard palate. Hard palate? The hard palate, number eight. Notice oh, the no. arrows. No, no, it's, uh, I think it's 11. How do we call this? Oral cavity. Yes, very good. You are right. The oral cavity. Yes. No, similar to number three. Number three is the nasal cavity. Number eight is the oral cavity, no oral chamber. No, this is another technical name. Let's continue. What about number nine? Number nine. Notice here. Number nine. It's the part behind the upper teeth. I think it's the alveolar, alveolar. Yes, alveolar. you're right. Very good. Yes. The alveolar reach. Or oh, alveolos, no? Lo sabemos en español. The alveolar reach. This is another important part of our um, oral cavity or our oral tract, because here we are going to produce the alveolar sounds, no? 
touching or pro, uh, approaching one organ to the alveolar reach. That's it. Very good. What about number 10? Mandible. Yes, yeah. you are right. Number 10 is the mandible. Yes, very good. Number 11. This is her heart palate. Exactly. The heart palate. Uh -huh. Or in other terms, we call this the roof of the mouth. No, this is the heart palate. This is another important part of our vocal track because here we are going to produce the palatal sounds. No, the palatal sounds. That's it. Very good. So, number 11 is the heart palate. Number 12. <laughs> Number 12. Tongue blade. Exactly. The tongue blade. That's right. This is the front part of the tongue, no? The tongue blade. Number 13. Tongue back. Exactly. Tongue back. Number 13. And finally, 14, tongue the tip. tongue tip. Eh? This is the tip of the tongue, tongue tip or apex, not apex, eh? the tongue tip. Notice that tongue, it's a very important articulator. You are going to use a lot the tongue to produce the vowels and to produce the consonant sounds. It's a very, very important because this is an active, this organ is called an active articulator. All right? Oh, oh, anybody is talking? Yes? Please don't forget to turn off your microphones. All right, so we have recognized here the different organs, the different parts our of articulatory anatomy. Remember, we have the vocal cords, we have the pharynx, the nasal cavity, our teeth, then we have the epiglottis or glottis. No, glottis is the, um, the space between the vocal cords. Uh, that's why the muscle, <clears throat> which is at the top, is called the epiglottis. Below the epiglottis, we have the glottis. Glottis, as I told you, is the space between the vocal cords in number one. Number one is the vocal cords. The space between the vocal cords is called the glottis. Remember, yeah, this is the glottis. And over the glottis, we have the epiglottis. That is a muscle, right? Okay, so here we have these uh, organs. Now we are going to continue. And we are going to pass to talk about the articulation of phonemes. And now we are going to start talking about how we are going to articulate the sounds. And we are going to start talking about vowel sounds. Do you have any idea what is a vowel? Don't tell me, ah, teacher, it's a sound. <laughs> yes, I know that the vowel is a sound, but what is it exactly? Do you have any idea what is a vowel sound? How do we produce a vowel sound? How? Can you tell me? This is in general, not an art teacher, but this is English. I don't know. Remember the phonetics, phonology. You use them or you talked about this in all the languages, no? So the terms are general, phone, phonemes. We also use it in, when we talk about sounds in Spanish, right? So vowels in English or Spanish is the same, no? So how we are going to produce them, they have some similitudes, general similitudes. Maybe there are some differences in how we are going to produce specifically each sound, but in general, we are going to produce the same, all right? So how do we produce a vowel sound in general? because we are going to find some differences for each vowel, no? But in general, how we are going to produce a vowel sound? How do we, we produce, produce a vowel with, sound? We yeah. produce with our lips. Our lips, yes. All right. We're going to lips. use our lips. What else? When you, uh, when you open or uh, close, uh, um, uh, what's, what, um, 
Hathaway you um, move for lips yeah yeah this is one of the aspects how you move your lips the shape of your lips and also one of your partners is using the vocal folds this is one of the characteristics of a vowel sound but let me tell you something i'm going to produce a vowel and you have to tell me if i'm a right or wrong Could you hear anything? No, because you are not using the vocal folds. Yeah. Something else. There is something else. Just using the vocal folds. Now I'm going to produce the sound again. Ah, uh, oo. I'm using the vocal folds. But how I can use the vocal folds? because I want to move the vocal folds and that's it. There is another important aspect. What is it? The air. If you don't release air from your lungs, you are not going to produce any sound. The air. So in order to produce, it could be either was a vowel or consonant, the first thing that you need to do is to release air from your lungs. You have to release air. If you don't release air, you are not going to produce any speech sound. No, we are talking about the speech sounds because I have a bottle here. No, here, this is my bottle. So I knock it out with my table. I'm producing a sound, but this is not a speech sound. But when you want to produce a speech sound, it could be a vowel or a consonant, first you need to release air from your lungs. And this air goes through the vocal folds. And if you want to produce a vowel sound, you need to vibrate your vocal folds, but using the air. If you don't release the air, you are not going to produce any sound. That's why, for example, when I say, no, I'm moving my lips, I'm moving my tongue, maybe I'm using my vocal folds, but I'm not releasing air. That's why we don't produce any sound. So the air stream, this is the name, no? The air stream, you need an air stream throwing out your lungs. And this air goes through your throat, specifically to your vocal cords. And in order to produce a vocal, or vowel sound, you need to vibrate. You need to close your vocal folds or vocal cords and you vibrate the sound. And also you are going to change this sound using the part of the tongue and the position of your tongue and the shape of the lips. So the way you move your lips, for example, no, when I say, ah, so I open my mouth, right? Ah. Then when I say E, notice my lips. It's like a smile, no? E, E, O. Then I have to round my lips. And eh? notice the shape of your lips, the position of your tongue, the part of your tongue. For example, when you say the vowel E, notice that you're using the blade of your tongue or the front part of your tongue. E, E, you use the front part of your tongue. But now, Say the vowel U, U. Notice that you are using now the back part of your tongue. U, U. You are not using the front part of your tongue. Eh? Another, for example, when you say E, the tongue goes up. E, E. Now produce the vowel A, A. Your tongue goes back, no, down. A, A. Your tongue goes down notice that tongue it's very important when you produce vowel sounds you are going to use the front part the central part the back part you are going to move it up you are going to move it down you are going to open your mouth round your lips close your lips spread your lips notice there are many characteristics that we use in vowel sounds so here we are going to analyze the vowel sounds 
are classified by, so we are going to uh, recognize each vowel sound. We are going to make a um, classification by. One of the aspects that we are going to analyze in vowel sounds is the part of the tongue. Remember, part of the tongue. Then position of the tongue. We are going to use our tongue in a high position, in a middle position, or in a low position inside our vocal tract, our oral cavity, remember? The third aspect is the position of the lips. If it is open, uh, if it is closed, e, if it is uh, rounded, or oh, eh? no, if it is mid-open, e, eh, and notice the shape of position of the lips. Remember, in other books, you could find this as a shape of lips, yeah? or position of the lips. Position of the tongue, you could say also the height of the tongue, no? the height, where you're going to locate your tongue inside a vocal tract, inside the oral cavity. Then you have the length of the sound. Length is similar to say the duration the duration of the sound, how long is the sound? We have two, short or long. For example, we have long vowels and short vowels. Long vowel, e, short vowel, e, 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 e. Eh? Notice long, short. This is the length of the sound. Finally, we have the tense of muscles. So, Teacher, how can I recognize uh, the tense of muscles? It's very easy. And there is a rule. First of all, you need to place your fingers here below your chin. All right? And here you can notice a muscle below your chin. So this muscle will be tense or lax. For example, produce the vowel. Yeah, follow me, follow me. Repeat after me. E. E, press a little bit, yeah? Press a little bit with your fingers below your chin, all right? Below your chin. E, E, E. Could you feel the muscle? Yes? E, remember, E, E. If you could notice, the muscle here is tense. Now, produce the other sound. E, 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 E. E, e. Could you notice the difference on the muscle? In one of the vowels, the muscle is tense. And on the other one, the muscle is lax, relax. You don't feel any tensity, all right? So here you have these five characteristics in order to classify vowel sounds because some of them have uh, certain similarities, but one or two characteristics is different, all right? But we have other characteristics of vowel sounds. There are not these five, but we are not going to put it into these five because these five is in order to differentiate the vowel sounds. The other characteristics that I'm gonna show you, they are not going to differentiate vowel sounds. These are characteristics that all vowels share. All vowels have these characteristics. What are these characteristics? Voicing. And Continuance. Voicing means that all vowel sounds are voiced. All vowel sounds are vibrated. Remember, this is one difference with the consonant sounds. Vowel sounds, all of them, yeah, all of them are vibrated. On the other side, consonant sounds, some of them are vibrated, some of them are not vibrated. So this is one of the difference. And remember, when we talk about consonants, try to remember this. Vowel sounds, all the vowel sounds vibrate. Consonant sounds, no. Consonants, some of them vibrate, some not. The other general characteristic for all the vowel sounds, remember, all the vowel sounds, that all vowel sounds are continuance. Teacher, what is that? Continuance, continue. It comes from the word continue, no? Continuance. It means that you can produce the sound as long as you can. This is the meaning of continuum. 
the sound is produced as long as you can. For example, you say, I'm going to take a deep breath yeah, in order to see it, how long can I produce the sound. No? E e I can do it until my breath is out, right? That's why we could say that all vowel sounds are continuous. You say, ooh, ah, eh. Hey, notice, you produce the sounds as long as you can. This is another difference with the consonant sounds. Consonants, some of them are continuous and some of them are upstream. Remember this name, upstream. It means that you're going to produce it just once and that's it. For example, the sound, pa, pa, pa. you produce it just once, right? You cannot say, pa. no, you cannot do that, right? You say, pa. you cannot do that. Or ta, the sound, ta, ta. No, it's not possible, just ta, ta, ta. just once, just at the moment, and that's it, no? So this is upstream. But there are consonants that are continuous. For example, the consonant, I need red. <laughs> oh, the other one. Continuance consonant sounds. And notice another difference. Notice the difference between vowel sounds and consonant sounds. Vowel sounds, all of them vibrate. Consonant, some vibrated, some not. Another. All vowel sounds are continuous. It means you can produce it as long as you can. But on the other side, consonant sounds, some of them are continuous, some of them are upstream. Notice these two characteristics, uh, these two characteristics are not inside the five, the previous five, because the previous five characteristics, a part of the tongue, position of the tongue, position of the lips, length of the sound, and tens of muscles, they are helpful because they can make us recognize each vowel sound. Oh yeah, I could say, oh yeah, this vowel is front and this vowel is back. Huh? Notice here. I'm going to put here for each category, you have subcategories. For example, if we talk about the part of the tongue, we have three parts of tongue. Front, center, back. So we have front vowels, central vowels, and back vowels. Eh? Front, center, back. This is related to that part of the tongue. If we talk about position of the tongue, we have these three, high, middle, low. Yeah? High, middle, low. So we have high vowels, middle vowels, low vowels. And notice these two characteristics, part of the tongue, position of the tongue. Part of the tongue, front, center, back. Position of the tongue, high, middle, low. The third characteristics, uh, position or shape of the lips. We have here four, close, mid open, open, rounded. So we have these four position or shape of the lips. Close vowels, mid open vowels, open vowels, and rounded vowels. Let's pass to the full characteristic, the length of the sound. Length of the sound, we have just two, short or long. Short vowels, long vowels. And finally, we have the tens of muscles. We have just two again, lax or tens. Notice here these five characters. Remember, we are going to analyze the five characteristics. The other two below are not useful if we want to differentiate vowel sounds because all the vowel sounds share these two characteristics. All vowels are continuous, all vowels are voice. So they are not useful if you want to differentiate vowel sounds. If you want to differentiate vowel sounds, you have these five characteristics, part of the tongue,
position of the tongue, position of the lips, length of the sound, and tense of muscles. Part of the tongue, front, center, back. Position of the tongue, high, middle, low. Position of the lips, close, mid-open, open, rounded. Length of the sound, short and long. Tense of muscles, lax and tense. Now, let's pass to the other one. And I advise you to recognize this diagram. I don't know if you have seen this diagram before. We are going to use this diagram in order to identify vowel sounds. This diagram represents your vocal tract and also your tongue. All right? So let's see it. Let's see it. We are going to analyze this part. Eh? Let's start. For example, the first characteristic was part of the tongue. In part of the tongue, we have front, center, back. Okay, so he has uh, <clears throat> the three characteristics, uh? <clears throat> front, center, back. So it means, uh, it means that we're going to divide the powers like this, here and here. Eh? Front, center, back. Eh? Notice here, front, center, back. So this is the part of the tongue. Now let's pass to the second characteristic. What was the second characteristic? Yeah, I'm gonna show you the, the slides. Don't worry, don't worry, all right? Yes, yes. So notice here, what is the second characteristic? The second characteristic is the height of the tongue. Height is similar to say position. Eh? Height of the tongue or position of the tongue. So in height of the tongue or position of the tongue, we have high, middle, low. Eh? Notice here, high. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, where is it? Yeah. So we have high, middle, low. This is the position of the tongue. Notice high, middle, low. Let's pass to the third characteristic. What was the third characteristic? The position of the lips or shape of the lips, eh? position of the lips. So when we talk about position of the lips, we are gonna have close, mid open, open and rounded, no? Then I'm gonna show you the rounded, yeah? So we have here, high, uh, close, mid-open, open. So we are going to divide the like this. All right, notice this is a diagram and in this diagram, we are going to recognize the vowel sounds. So we have these three characteristics, part of the tongue, height or position of the tongue, position of the lips. Now let's see the vowels. Which vowels are front? Notice, which vowels are front? We have the vowel E, 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 A. These vowels, for example, the first two vowels, E and E, they are front, high, close. Notice they share these three characteristics. The E, a small letter E and the capital letter E. So the small is the long sound and the other is the small one. E, 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 E. All right? So notice here, let's pass to the other one. The central vowels. What are the central vowels? Uh, the famous schwa. Uh, er, uh, uh, er, uh. So these are the central vowels. They are middle, mid open. Eh? They are middle, mid open. And finally, we have the back vowels. Which are the back vowels? Ooh, oh, oh, 
Oh, ah. Oh. So we have here the vowel sounds. And as I told you, here we recognize the rounded. Which vowels are rounded? Ooh, oh, 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 oh. And the last back vowel is not rounded, it's open. But notice that we apply rounded just in the back vowels, not in the central vowels, neither in the front vowels. Just in the back vowels, we apply the characteristic of rounded. Yeah? So be careful when you write the characteristics of a vowel sounds and you have the back vowels. So when we talk about the shape of the lips or position of the lips, we could say that four of them are rounded. One of them is open, the final A, uh, no? the final A. Uh. Okay, teacher, yeah, that's wonderful. Yes, we have three characteristics, part of the tongue, height of the tongue, or position of the tongue, position of the lips. But teacher, you told us that we have five. Where are the other two characteristics? Can we see it here in this diagram? because we have a length of the sound and tens of muscles. Where are they? Can we identify in this diagram these two characteristics? Yes. How? Notice here how. When we talk about the length of the sound, remember, you recognize the long sounds using this symbol. I'm going to change it. Yeah, here it is. Look at this symbol. Oh, it's too big. Just give me a second. Um, yeah. I'm going to make it thinner, no thicker. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Notice this symbol that you have in this central vowel. Can you see it? Can you watch it? Yes, teacher. Okay, no, it's just like the two points or two small triangles, right? Yes. Also, notice here, you have here too, no? Here, here, and here. And let me tell you, there is one more, but it's not here. I don't know what happened. Maybe some mistake my computer didn't recognize. I'm going to write it here because the vowel E, yeah, the vowel E is one of them is long too, all right? Yeah, here it is. That's so notice here, we have this, this symbol. This symbol, remember, <coughs> oh, <laughs> who's coughing? Yeah, this symbol that you can see here, these two points or these two small triangles, it means that these sounds are long. Ah, these two points or these two small triangles? Ah, yeah, this vowel is long. And when you don't have these two points or these two triangle, it means that the vowel is short. So notice how many long vowel sounds do we have? We have E, one, er, two, o, three, o, four, a, five. So we have five vowels which are long. Remember, this symbol represents that the sound is long. And the others, obviously, the others are short. If this symbol doesn't have these two points or these two small triangles, it means that these sounds are short. Okay, teacher. Yeah, that's it. I got it. Four characteristics. And um, what about the fifth? The tins of muscles. Teacher, where can I find the tins of muscles? It's easy. There is a rule, remember, that's what I told you, know, that you have to touch, touch your chin again, please do it again. That touch with your fingers, yeah, with just two fingers, touch your chin, below your chin. Here you can find a muscle. And we are going to produce the first two vowels, the E vowels, yeah? together, yeah? do it together with me. Yeah? So let's start with the first one, the long vowel. First, the long vowel, the small E, with two small triangles or two small points. Let's produce it. E, E, E. This is the long. Huh? Notice that the muscle which is here below your chin. E, E. Could you feel it? Yes, tell me, tell me. Could you feel it? Yes. Yes. So, how could you feel it? It was tense or lax? 
Relax. Are you sure? Yeah. Again, again, press, press here. You have to press just a little bit. E, E, E. In this case. Could you feel Tins. it? Yeah. Tins. Tins. Now e let's pass to the short sound, the short. E, 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 E. Now is lax. So what is the rule? Can you tell me the rule? ¿Cuál sería la regla entonces? A ver, what is the rule? If the sound is long, long is tense. Yes, you got it. If the sound is long, the long muscle is tense. tense. And if the sound is short, it's relaxed. It's lax. Excellent. Aha. Uh -huh. So now you have the five characteristics. Notice, you have the five characters. You can watch it visually, three of them, no? Part of the tongue, height of the tongue, position of the lips. But the other two, you have to analyze the symbol, no? Ah, yeah, long or short? How do I know if the vowel is long or short? Ah, because of the two points or the two small triangles. If you can see these two small triangles or two points, it means that the vowel is long. And if the vowel is long, so the muscles are tense. If the vowel is short, no two points, no two small triangles, it's short, so the muscles are lax. So here you have the five characteristics of vowel sounds. Notice that it's very important to recognize these five characteristics, okay? All right, so <clears throat> now we're going to describe the vowel sound. Each vowel sound is going to have these five characteristics. Let's do it together. Now we're going to go do it together. Don't be scared. Oh, teacher, too much information. <laughs> because sometimes you say, oh, I'm getting confused. Too much information. Part of the tone position, the tone height of the tone. Whoa, front, center, back. <laughs> so it's a little tricky. You know? It's a little tricky. But it's very important in order to recognize how to produce each vowel sound. And you can do it better, you know? You can improve your pronunciation with a more detailed or a specific pronunciation, all right? Let's see. We're going to start with the front vowels, yeah? the front vowels. Remember, the, these are the front vowel sounds. E, 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 A. Notice my lips. Eh, notice my lips. Look at my face. Eh? Look at my face. E. Notice the position of my lips. E. 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 A. What am I doing with my lips? ¿Qué estoy haciendo con mis labios? E. 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 A. If you could notice... I'm starting with my lips almost closed, right? E, I open the lips just a little bit, no? And I spread my lips. E, then I open a little more. E, then a little more. E, then a little more. Ah. Eh? Notice, I'm from the close. No, notice here, close. Then I open it. I open it. I open it. And notice, open and close, open and close. So this is the movement of your lips. Eh? Close, open, close, open. E, 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 a. I open, all right? So we are going to identify the characteristics of each vowel sound. So for example, the first vowel is called front, high, Close, long, tense. Front, because of the part of the tongue. No, this is a front vowel because we use the front part of the tongue. High, it means that we are going to place the tongue in a high position. Close is the position of your lips. Your lips are almost closed. You're, you're not going to open your mouth when you produce the vowel E, no? You just open a little bit. Long, remember, long 
because you can notice that two points, no, the two small triangles. It's a long, and if it is long, it stings. So here you have the five characteristics. Notice five characteristics of the vowel E. Front, high, close, long, things. Let's pass to the other one. The other is front, close, short, last, high. If you could notice, you know, here that, uh, there's a mixing. Yeah, Here you have front, high, close. The same characteristics, no? Three characteristics are the same. From high, close. From high, close. What is the difference? In the length of the sound. The first vowel is long. The second vowel is short. The first vowel is tense. The second is lax. So the difference is in two characteristics. <coughs> the length of the sound and the tense of muscles. Let's pass to the third one. Front. Mid open, short, lax, middle. So again, here you have front is the part of the tongue. Mid open is the position of the lips. Short is the length of the sound. Lax is the tints of muscles. And middle is the position or height of the tongue. And again, here you have the five characteristics. The other one is front, open, low, short, lax. Here you have again these vowel. Front, the part of the tongue. Open, the position of the lips. Low, the position of the tongue. Short, length of the sound. Lax, the tense of muscles. And notice the five characteristics again, all right? So we are giving these definitions for each vowel sound, how we are going to produce them, talking about the position of the leaves, the position of the tongue, the part of the tongue, the length of the sound, and finally, the tense of muscles. These are the from vowels, remember, from vowels. Let's pass to the central vowels. In the central vowels, we have three. O, oh, the most common vowel, the schwa. O, oh, and er. Remember, O, oh, O, oh, er. What is the difference between the first two? Let's see it. Center, mid-open, middle, short, lax. Center the part of the tongue, mid open, the position of the shapes, no? the, the position of the lips, middle, the position of the tongue, short, the length of the sound, lax, the tints of muscles. What about the other one? Notice that they are the same, teacher, they are the same, center, Mid open, middle, short, lax, teacher. So why do you consider them two symbols if they are the same? Notice what is the difference. The first vowel, I'm going to write it here. The first vowel is used, remember, this is a rule. Yeah? The first vowel, the inverted E, that is called a sha, that is the vowel that we use the most, and at the same time, the vowel that we take out the most. Uh, this is a paradoxy here. Yeah? We use this vowel in unstressed syllables. Remember, this is the rule. We are going to use the first vowel in unstressed syllables. And we are going to use the second vowel in stressed syllables. Yeah, remember the difference. Yeah, remember the difference because they share the same characteristics. They are central, they are mid-open, they are middle, they are short, they are lax. Oh, your microphone, please. Yeah. 
So they share the same characteristics. Uh, what is the difference? The use. When do we use the first vowel? The uh, in unstressed syllables. That's why this is the vowel that we use the most, yeah? because most of the words have unstressed syllables. No, one syllable is stressed and the other are unstressed. But the second one is used in stressed syllables. I'm going to give you one example. Yeah? For example, you have the word here um, about. Yeah, the word about. About has two syllables. No, it is start with a shot. Uh, 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 about, uh, about. So you start with a shot. You use this uh in an unstressed syllable. Uh is not a stress. You stress about. You say about. You say about. Eh? About. So you stress about. You don't stress uh. So you use the shot. Notice when do we use the other one? The other one is using a stress syllable. For example, the word sun. Sun. You use the sun uh, 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 sun, sun. Notice my lips. Notice my lips. Sun. I don't say sun. You don't open the mouth. No, sometimes we confuse and we produce like ah, sun teacher, sun. No, sun, no, sun, sun. Mid open, remember the characteristic, mid open. You don't have to open your mouth a lot, all right? Just mid open, uh, 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 note in my lips, uh, 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 sun, sun, sun. I don't say sun, ah, no, ah, no, yeah? It's not ah, it's uh, 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 sun, 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 sun. Remember, so we use this vowel in a stressed, syllables remember in a stress syllables and the other one the first one in unstressed syllables because they share the same characteristics and the last one the last uh, central vowel oh yeah here you have an stress stress the last one is center mid open middle long things so the difference between the other two is the length of the sound and the teens of muscles no? Long things, er, 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 like in the word girl, bird, earth. Eh? Notice you use this vowel sound, eh? girl, earth, bird, sir. Eh? You use this vowel sound in these words, all right? And we finish with the back vowels. Let's pass to the back vowels. Just to finish with the session of front today. We have o, 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 a. Notice again my lips. Look at my face. O, 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 a, a. Notice how I am opening my mouth from a very little one. No, o. Eh? Notice my lips. O. Ooh, then I make a little more open, oh, more open, oh, more open, ah, and more open, ah. And notice here how I'm changing the shape of my lips. All right. So let's see. So this vowel is back, rounded. Notice here you're not going to use open, mid, open, close. No. All right. You're not going to use open, mid, open, close. No rounded back rounded high long things the other oh this is a short one back rounded high short lax notice the last two characteristics are different no the three first are the same back rounded high the other two <clears throat> is the difference long things short lax the other back rounded middle long things middle notice middle that tongue is <clears throat> in the middle of your vocal tract you round your lips and eh? you round your lips the other back rounded low short lax remember that this uh, symbol is used uh, most in british english in American English, you're not going to find the symbol. Eh? In American, they use a, a vowel that is more at the center, not so back. 
and rounded. They don't have a back rounded vowel, American. In British, we have the back rounded low short laps, uh, British. And the other is back, open, low, short, lax. So here you have the different uh, vowel sounds that we are going to produce in the English language. Yeah? So these are the pure vowels. We have, remember, these characteristics, part of the tongue, position of the tongue, position of the lips, length of the sound, and tints of muscles. We use these characteristics to differentiate vowel sounds. One is back, the other is front. One is long, the other is short. One is middle, the other is low. One is mid-open, the other is rounded. And notice, you are differentiating sounds, vowel sounds, because remember that they have two general characteristics. No? All of them are voiced, all of them are continuous. So we're not going to use these two characteristics. We use just the five characteristics to differentiate vowel sounds. Um, well, we're just getting to the end. Um, uh, let me tell you, I'm going to uh, speak in Spanish. Por el tiempo ya nos está ganando. A ver, eh, estimados docentes, para la, el desarrollo de sus trabajos o actividades que se les deja, vamos a utilizar, voy a compartir aquí ahorita, eh, la plataforma de Google Classroom. No sé si alguno ya ha utilizado el Google Classroom. Yes. Listo, perfecto. Pero igual les voy a enseñar para que puedan recordar de repente algunos que se han olvidado, no utilizan mucho, nunca lo han utilizado. Miren, esta es la plataforma del Google Classroom. ¿Ustedes cómo entran? Profesor, ¿cómo entro al Google Classroom? Si es que alguna vez o todavía no han entrado o no se acuerdan muy bien. Acuérdense que esto lo pueden ustedes encontrar en sus herramientas de Google, ¿no? Cuando yo abro mi página y estoy en mi correo de Google, de Gmail, que diga, de Gmail, aquí ustedes pueden notar una cuadrícula donde dice Google Apps. ¿Lo pueden ver? A ver, voy a ampliar un poquito. Miren, acá, ven esa cuadrícula, dice Google Apps, ¿no? ¿Sí? Bien. Yes. Ya está. Entonces, yo le voy a dar clic ahí y ahí me van a aparecer todos los aplicativos de Google, ¿no? Pensé que Google tiene bastantes aplicativos. Tienen el Google Drive, el Gmail, el Calendar, tienen el Google Meet, ¿no? Que ahora se utiliza también bastante para dar las videoconferencias o clases. Tienen el Blogger para hacer sus blogs personales. Y aquí ustedes pueden notar un icono que dice Classroom. Entonces, yo le doy clic ahí. Acuérdense, si ustedes ya tienen Gmail ya tienen Classroom, así que no es que, profesor, tengo que crearme mi Classroom, no. Lo que tienen que hacer es unirse a mi salón, nada más. Por eso ahora yo les voy a dar un código para que ustedes pongan ese código y se unen a la clase. Y ahí ustedes van a subir sus trabajos, ahí van a tener también los materiales. Por ejemplo, para lo que es vocales, les estoy dejando ahí audios, para que con esos audios ustedes puedan desarrollar los ejercicios que tienen en su separata, en su manual. ¿Ya? Miren, le doy clic en Classroom y les va a aparecer... Uy, ¿qué pasó? ¿Qué pasó? Acá está, ya. Oh, no, vamos a ver aquí, ya. Vamos a... Les va a aparecer algo parecido a esto. Claro que a ustedes de repente no les va a aparecer todos los iconos o temas que tiene aquí porque estos son los cursos que yo he creado, ¿no? De repente a ustedes les va a aparecer todo esto en blanco. Si es que no han creado un curso, no se han unido nunca a, un, a algún curso, lo van a tener en blanco. Así que no se asusten. Uy, el profesor tenía varios iconos, sí, no los veo, ¿dónde están? <ríe> Porque no han utilizado de repente ustedes nunca de Classroom o nunca han entrado, nunca se han unido, nunca han creado. Entonces, ¿cómo entro, profesor? Si lo ve en blanco, ¿a dónde voy? Ya, vamos a ir a la parte superior derecha, donde estaba la cuadrícula, donde tenemos esas cuadrículas, dice Google Apps. Al costadito tengo un símbolo de más. Miren, lo voy a agrandar aquí. Ven aquí el símbolo de más. Está al costado de la cuadrícula. ¿Ven? Google Apps. Al lado izquierdo encuentro, y ahí dice, ¿qué dice ahí? Crear una clase o unirse. Entonces yo le doy clic ahí. Le voy a dar clic en el más y me voy a poner donde dice unirse a la clase. Acuérdense, cuando vimos los tics, les enseñé cómo crear la clase, ¿no? Ahora solamente se van a unir, o sea, porque van a entrar a mi clase, porque ahí van a ver los trabajos y van a ustedes poner sus trabajos ahí, ¿ya? Unirse a la clase. Entonces, yo le doy clic en unirse a la clase y me va a pedir un código, ¿verdad? Y le dice código de clase, pídele a tu profesor el código de clase y luego le ingrésalo aquí. Entonces, acá les voy a poner ahorita el código. 
Miren. Ah, ¿Dónde estamos? Ya, acá está. Aquí está. Ya, a ver, si lo apuntan, por favor, o lo copio para que ustedes lo tengan en el chat. Lo voy a copiar ahorita. Uy, ¿dónde estamos? Ya, aquí está. Ya, los que pueden, lo pueden apuntar, si ahí lo tienen, FU34TIM, ¿ya? FU34TIM, pero por si acaso también lo voy a poner aquí en el chat, ¿ya? Uy, ¿qué pasó? No quiso copiarse, ver un ratito, y ya. Ya está. Ya lo puse en el chat también para que ustedes también lo tengan ahí, pero también les estoy mostrando ahí. Entonces, lo único que van a hacer, vuelvo a repetirles, es entrar a su Gmail, buscar esa cuadrícula que diga Google Apps, ¿no? Vuelvo a repetir, busco la cuadrícula que dice Google Apps, dentro de esa cuadrícula voy abajo, porque de repente no le sale al inicio, voy bajando, voy bajando, hasta donde encuentre el icono que diga Classroom. Le doy clic a ese icono de Classroom, y me va a aparecer una pantalla como la que les voy a mostrar aquí, ¿ya? Pero de repente les va a salir en blanco, porque eh, de repente no lo han utilizado nunca o, o no se han unido nunca a una clase. Entonces les va a aparecer en blanco, así que no, repito, no se vayan a asustar. No van a decir, uy, no está igual al que nos mostró el profesor. No, es diferente porque yo sí he creado cursos, ¿no? Y todo. Por eso que ven ahí esos, esos temas... Eh, ahí en la, en la pantalla, pero a ustedes les va a salir en blanco, entonces no se vayan a asustar. Entonces lo que tienen que hacer, repito, es se van al símbolo de más, parte superior derecha, al costado de la cuadrícula de Google Apps, veo el símbolo más, le doy clic en el símbolo más y le pongo unirse a clase. ¿Ya? Repito, no vayan a crear clases, sino unirse a la clase. Pongo clic, le doy clic en unirse a la clase y me va a pedir que ponga el código que es el código que les he dado. Ponen el código y automáticamente ya van a poder ver, ¿ya? Miren, aquí yo les voy a mostrar. Tienen ahí novedades, trabajo en clase, calificaciones. Van donde dice trabajo en clase. Voy en el icono donde dice trabajo en clase y ahí van a encontrar de la primera y segunda semana. La primera y la segunda semana lo suben ahí, ¿ya? Lo van a subir ahí, sus trabajos. ¿Ok? ¿Listo? ¿Alguna pregunta hasta aquí? ¿Alguna duda? ¿Algo que no quedó claro cómo unirse a la clase? Disculpe, profesor, la fecha de entrega es la que incluye la que Sí, la que aparece ahí, sí, hasta el fin del módulo, ¿no? Porque es más o menos la fecha en que estamos terminando este módulo. Entonces tienen plazo para entregar hasta el fin del módulo, ¿ya? Pero eso okay. sí, no, no vayan a esperar, ah, como tengo hasta el 31, ah, después lo hago. <ríe> Gradúe ahí sus tiempos, porque si después, uy, después voy a ver, uy, ya nos falta tres días, uy, después para poder hacer todos los trabajos. No son muchos, ya no son muchos, son unos cuantos, pero eso sí, para que no se estresen tanto. <ríe> para que, uno, uy, ahora tengo que hacer esto, 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 esto. Les aconsejo ir avanzando poco a poco, lo van realizando y para que al final no se les vaya a juntar. ¿Ya? Pero la fecha es esa, hasta el 31 de marzo. ¿Ya? Para que es más o menos la fecha en que terminamos. ¿no? Nosotros terminamos este módulo de fonética el día, a ver, vamos a ver acá dónde estamos el calendario, a ver, 6, 3, 27. Entonces hasta el 31 tienen plazo de entregar el, todos los trabajos de lo que es el módulo de fonética, porque ya el día 3 estamos comenzando el módulo de fonología, que también ya lo ven ahí, pero todavía no les he dejado nada para que suban, ¿no? pero ya está ahí. Entonces el 3 ya comenzamos lo que es fonología. Por eso que hasta el 31 tienen plazo de entregar todos sus trabajitos de fonética. Ahí tienen las indicaciones, si hay alguna duda me pueden mandar también por el chat, ya para eh, de repente algo que no quedó claro, ya los, les explico y ustedes puedan subir sin ningún inconveniente sus trabajos, ¿ok? Profesor, disculpe, las tareas han sido creadas ahí mismo en el Google, ahí lo mismo lo vamos a resolver o son documentos para imprimir y llenar y después mandar evidencia. Claro. Eso, eh, por ejemplo, la, la primera semana ustedes han recibido una hoja de actividades. Sí. Ya, ahí yo les he puesto unas páginas que también están en su manual, ya son páginas del manual, eso si quieren ustedes lo completan ahí mismo, de ahí lo imprimen, lo, o lo guardan y lo mandan, o si no le toman una fotito y esa foto también lo pueden mandar. O lo, pone, o lo hacen a mano, igual lo toman una foto y me lo mandan. O sea, la manera en que ustedes puedan enviarlo, 
¿ya? Igual, en la segunda semana va a ser con audios. <coughs> ahí yo les voy a mandar los audios, ¿ya? Para que ustedes puedan realizar igual. Ahí ya tienen el ejercicio, el número del ejercicio y si necesita audio o no necesita audio. Ya 15 de los números de ejercicio que se les deje en la semana 2. ¿no? Por ejemplo, ahí en la primera dice página 6, ejercicio 2.1, 2.3, si no me equivoco, 2.5, algo así. Y con audio. Entonces yo ya les voy a mandar el audio para que ustedes, estoy pasando porque me di cuenta que era otro formato, de repente no lo iba a reproducir acá, lo estoy convirtiendo, ¿ya? Para que ustedes lo tengan ya y listo. Ahora, no solamente va a estar los audios del, de, las, de los ejercicios, ahí ustedes van a tener el audio de todo el material de fonética, cuando sea audio, todo el material de lo que es fonética, ustedes lo van a tener ahí. Así que eso es para que ustedes lo escuchen, lo practiquen, les aconsejo que se graben, vayan grabándose su voz, no es muy importante escucharse cómo estoy pronunciando para hacer una similitud. Ah, ya, mira, lo escuché, sí, lo estoy, ah, ya estoy bien, muy bien, ya sigo, avanzo, ¿ya? Más que todos los ejercicios de la, la primera semana es cómo utilizar el diccionario, cómo reconocer el número de sílabas, ¿no? El, el, la sílaba con mayor fuerza de voz, ¿no? Eso es más que todo en la primera semana, la utilización del diccionario. La segunda semana, como les digo, es con audios, que está en la separata. Por eso ahí les dice el número de la página en la separata. ¿no? La página 6, página 8, página 10, si no me equivoco, está en pares. ¿ya? Y también les indica el número de ejercicios. Son unos, no son todos los ejercicios por página. He escogido más que todo tres de cada página, ¿ya? Para que ustedes lo puedan ir realizando. Entonces yo, más tarde, sí, entro media hora, 20 minutitos, ya estoy mandando el audio, lo estoy, voy a poner ahí para que ustedes lo puedan descargar, ya lo tienen que descomprimir, va a estar en un archivo de zip, lo descomprimen y de ahí ya van a poder tener todos los audios. Repito, ahí los audios van a estar de todo el material de, la, de lo que es eh, la segunda semana, acuérdense, la segunda semana, todos los audios de la segunda semana. <coughs> ¿Qué se refiere a vocales? ¿Ya? está no solamente de los ejercicios, sino también de, la, de las páginas donde ustedes van practicando los sonidos y viendo las palabras. ¿ya? La siguiente clase vamos a reforzar un poquito más las vocales, su pronunciación, ya que hoy día hemos visto las características, falta un poquito practicar lo que es los sonidos en sí, para pasar ya a la tercera que sería las consonantes. ¿ya? ¿Listo? ¿Alguna otra pregunta? El tiempo ya nos está ganando. ¿Tuvieran alguna consulta? Vuelvo a repetirla. Me mandan a mi chat. Ya, profesor, disculpe, estaba entrando, pero no sé no, dónde no encuentro el más o no sé cómo subir. Pues yo le puedo ir ayudando, ¿ok? Sí, ¿alguna otra consulta? Pues ya se va a cerrar. Disculpe, profesor, en el grupo de inglés, ¿ese es el, el administrador? ¿Es usted? No, es el administrador, es el de Duperú. ¿Y cuál es su número? Entonces, ¿dónde le podemos hacer la consulta? Ah, ya. Ahí dentro del grupo está mi número. Ahí está ¿Sí? mi número. Ah, sí, dentro okay. del grupo ahí está mi número. José Gatión. ¿Ya? Listo. Entonces, ahora sí, vamos despidiéndonos. That's all for today. See you next class. Don't miss it, please. Don't miss it. Try to be in class in order to get all the knowledge, all the information. And maybe you're not going to be lost for the next session. All right. That's all for today. Have a nice weekend. Take care a lot. Thanks for your attention and participate. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.